Well, I just wanted to say how great it is to finally watch your performance in uh, Adam Green's Hatchet 2 this past weekend. I wasn't, I wasn't quick enough to catch the film in the theater, so I remained strong and held out to make my first time the Blu-ray experience. So anyway, nice. <laughs> so anyway, I caught something interesting when watching the behind-the-scenes footage of Hatchet 2. Adam Green, uh -huh. Adam Green made mention of this when he made the recruitment phone call to you and said something about asking him to. You said something about asking him to admit that he was wrong. I took that to mean that you originally wanted the role of Mary Beth in the first film, but what did you really mean by that? <laughs> yeah, well, I auditioned for it, and uh, and I didn't get it. Oh. And then Nikki gave it to somebody else, and then I came back and, and did it, so I kind of, you know, I just like to poke fun of them a little bit. No harm in that. I, he's, a, he's a nice guy, and I'm, I was very excited to see you back on that project, so that was great. Yeah, I think. Like I said, I've had the pleasure of speaking with Adam Green a few times now and then, and I witnessed his energy and charisma behind the scenes there. So what's it really like to work with the guy there? He's just a big kid, you know? I mean, Adam's great. Adam and I are friends, so I knew, you know, I knew him for quite a while before we did this together, and he's just, he's a fanboy making what he loves to make. I mean, while it is stressful, I'm sure, you know, he's got a lot on his plate at any given time. Um, he mm -hmm. still loves to do what he does, and, and, and he creates a really, like, cool atmosphere, and he hires his, the same crew over and over and over again. And um, hopefully I'll hire the same cast over and over and over again. I included in that. And uh, you know we're just we're just kind of like a big family. It's really nice. Yeah, I I, I know he has a big uh, nice toy collection too. There, huh? Yeah, he has a crazy toy collection. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, Riley, too, because Riley, his wife, is totally into, like, comic books and, all, you know, all that stuff, too. So, between the two of them, they're, like, a match made in heaven. It's awesome. Yeah, that's what he was saying to me last week, because I was saying my wife doesn't, you know, approve of me collecting all this stuff. But he, like, says his wife does, and uh, kind of... Yeah, she probably has that. a bigger collection than he does. <laughs> Well, that's something different. Do you see yourself working with Adam Green any time um, on any future projects at all? Any more? Yeah, I mean, whenever he wants to cast me, I'll totally do. So it's just a matter of, you know, what, what he wants to do next. I mean, there's definitely, you know, we talked a bit last night about, you know, a third hatchet, which I think would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that you've seen it, I'm not sure there's no spoilers here, but um, me being the only survivor... Um, I definitely want to want to come back. Um, I don't know if Adam is going to want to come back as a director, or he's going to write it, or produce it, or even if there is going to be another one. But he seems to be pretty confident that something something good will come out of the success from Hatchet Two because it's being pretty well received, which is awesome. Speaking of Hatchet Two again, uh, what about working with horror icon Tony Todd? That had been really cool. I'm oh, sure. he's great. I love Tony, you know, Tony, Tony and I did Night of the Living Dead, The Origins, too, and we've traveled quite a bit together over the years, um, for, like, you know, conventions and film festivals and stuff like that, and he's just a really great guy, I mean, all those guys are great guys, they're like, they're like my big brothers, you know, they look out for me and they protect me and take care of me, and, um, yeah, I, um, I really, I really like all of them, very much so. Well, that's awesome. Speaking of you being the only survivor there in Hatchet 2, I, I must say I was pretty impressed by your, your emotional acting in Hatchet 2. And you stole, ah, thank you. You stole the show in several scenes, but there's one in particular that I hold near and dear in my heart, and that's the final scene where you just kind of lose it on Crowley. Matter. Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, how do I do that? Um, let's see. Um, I think it's just sort of putting myself in that situation. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to not act like a crazy person when like you're acting like a crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like taking a hat to a guy's face. It's kind of hard to not just let yourself play and see what comes out of it. And the emotional stuff, I mean, it's, when it's well written and, and where you trust the actors that you're working with, it's, it's sort of, it's our job. You know, that's what we get, that's what we get paid to do. So, um, I try to, to, to bring me to every, every, character, I think that it's, I always feel like it's how I would react in that situation, I never play at something, I just am me, and, and how would I feel if this were actually happening, and that's kind of what comes out.
I, I think it was awesome. I think it even actually topped my uh, Rob Zombie Halloween ending there. Uh, I thought that was pretty <laughs> impressive, but... Uh, Awesome. Well, hell yeah, because it's making you yeah. better than you laying on the floor dead. <laughs> hell yeah, yeah. I have to admit, though, when I first learned I was going to interview you today, I had to go back and brush up on my, my Daniel Harris history. I mean, I, I grew up with you during the Halloween 4 and 5 years. I remember seeing you on screen when I was uh, almost your same age, too. But other than, uh -huh. other than the horror films, I was kind of oblivious to the rest of your film and television resume. It's really quite impressive. Uh, my wife even remembers you on Roseanne. Uh, what's in store for uh, you next in oh, the television thank film? You, thank you. You know, I'm, I'm auditioning all the time. You know, I just actually read for um, a pilot, and they're looking for someone last minute. And I'm always auditioning for film and for TV out of the genre. I just, I get what I get. And it just seems to me that what I get is mostly in the horror genre. Because I've got some amazing, you know, fans and people that, that want to continue to see me work in that world. So I'm not, I'm not really opposed to, mm -hmm. to anything. I mean, I did an episode of Psych recently, and it was pretty cool. I hadn't done, you know, anything on TV in, in a while. So it was, it was cool to, to kind of go back and, and be able to, to get in there and, and play and be in a, in a well-oiled machine because it's, it's and then, you know, independent film, especially horror genre stuff, it's fast and furious. There's a lot of stuff going on. So it's cool to show up on someone else's set and let them take care of everything for once. Yeah. And uh, I can't do this interview and not tell you how excited I was when I first found out that you were cast in Rob Zombie's Halloween. I... <laughs> Like I said, I remember you on screen as little Jamie Lloyd, and then some 20 years later, I got to see you all growing up again playing the role of Annie Brackett. That's right. That was very, very exciting. So what was it like being part of the legendary Halloween franchise all over again some 20 years later? It's kind of crazy, actually. Um, you know, who who knew that that same movie that launched my career originally was going was to bring it back 20 years later? But I'm incredibly grateful for it, that's for sure. So it was Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Speaking of Rob Zombie, uh, the guy's a legend in his own right. I mean, he tackles all the important social issues we believe in, music, movies, and comics. Um, yeah. Hell, he even turned me on to Ford Mustangs back in the 90s. I've had the pleasure of talking to him a few times, and I admire the, the way he loves and cherishes his fans, too. The guy truly does not stop talking to you until you stop talking to him. So tell me, yeah, pretty much. what was it like working on the movie set with Mr. Mr. Zombie in those two films? You know, Rob, I've been really lucky that I've worked with some directors that are like, you know, fanboys to begin with and just really want to be there and really want to make movies. And I, I'm, I think that they're, you know, Rob is, he's just cool. He's like, that's just who he is, you know. He just loves what he does and he does it really, really well. And he's just a total artist. I mean, you know, from his, his art to his music to his filmmaking and his writing, like, he can kind of do anything. So I have, a, I have a lot of respect for him. Yeah, I mean, both him and Adam are both kind of the same, you know, just passionate guys that uh, just enjoy what they do, and I admire the hell out of that. Yeah, um, I mean, it seems like a lot of directors in the horror genre um, are, you know, are, are in it because they, love, they love horror movies, and like, you know, other, you don't see many, like, you know, dramatic comedy directors doing it because <laughs> they love romantic comedies, they're doing it because it's a paycheck, and it's work, and they love to direct. So I think that's what sets the horror genre aside from the others. Uh, you hinted a little bit about Hatchet 3. Do you know anything, um, or have the inside knowledge of what's happening with the status of Halloween 3 at all? Or? Uh, I don't know anything. I'm <laughs> dead, so they don't, no, one, no one tells me anything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to say I'm that. just, if they, if they do come back with something, I've heard, like, rumors that it was going to be 3D. I heard rumors that, like, they wanted to start the whole thing all over again and, like, act like the thoughts on these Halloween never even existed. I mean, who knows? It's such a mess right now, I think. And that would be a shame if they started it all over again. But. Yeah, I don't know why they keep doing that. Like, come on already. It's old. So, you, you already own the title of Scream Queen, and the contributions in the world of horror films have solidified a legacy for you, but are there any other roles or genres that interest you that you may want to consider going after in the future? Yeah, I mean, any, anything. You know, I just love, I love to act, period. So, kind of anything that comes my way as far as character stuff. If it's, if it's, if it's fun and it's something I haven't done before, then I'm all over it. You know, I mean, I would, I would love to be in a Jet Alpha Cat movie. I would love to be in a Todd Solon film. Um, and if it comes my way, then I'll take it. How did you uh, first come come involved in acting? I mean, I know Halloween was your earliest roles, but uh, how did you get that acting? You know, I was, a, I was a beauty pageant kid. 
and started in beauty pageants, believe it or not, and um, kind of realized that I wanted to do, I wanted to be in the movies and do commercials, and my mom was kind enough to, you know, put her job aside and go, okay, I'll take my shit on auditions, and that's how I got started. That's, that's very nice of your mom. Uh, besides, the, <laughs> besides the films, the television shows, and whatnot that you're currently involved in, what makes Danielle Green tick. I mean, you obviously stay in phenomenal shape, but what else do you do outside of acting that your fans don't know about you? Wow. Um, what do I do? Um, I, I exercise almost every day. It's more for, for me mentally than anything else. Um, and I'm pretty strong. When I've got, I've got a few dogs that I run all the time, and mm-hmm. you know, and I have a great group of girlfriends, and we're all actors, and we all like to stay in shape. So we meet up every morning and go for hikes. And I live in California, so there's some beautiful mountains, and I take a lot of class. I take yoga, I take dance class. I'm kind of all over the place. I just really like to be active. Oh, it's like 70 degrees here. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> what advice would you give to future aspiring scream queens and actors out there that are looking to follow in your footsteps? Hmm. Um, make your own things happen. You know, make your own movies. Get your name out there. Start websites. Start making movies with your friends. On you know, these, these cameras are so easy now. You can pretty much do anything. Just get proactive. Get in the car after theater school. You know, whatever, whatever you need to do. I wouldn't major. I would go to college. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't really pursue it after college. If you're going to go to college, I wouldn't major in theater. That's for sure. <laughs> um, cause it's, you know, it's not a requirement. Yeah. But definitely stay educated and watch film and read. Gotcha. Have you ever thought of writing or directing your own a horror movie of your own one day? Yeah, I actually just applied to AFI, um, American Film Institute, with yeah. uh, to the Women's Directing Program. Okay. So, yeah, so directing is sort of on the on the list for me next. That that'd be great. I look forward to that. I Thank saw, you. I saw you last year at Comic Con. Will you be attending this year too, or? Mm. Coming out before them, I probably I think in my living Dead the Origins is probably going to bring me out there this year. We'll see. We'll see when they're when they're done with that movie. Okay, well that'd be great to see you back out there. Thanks. I, I know you probably got to get going. I just want to say thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. I appreciate it. Very sure. Much. I'm Thank a, you so much. Pleasure. I'm a big fan of yours and uh, your work, and I wish you nothing but the best of luck in all your future projects. Before I let you go, I have one last question for you. Okay. What's your favorite horror movie of all time and why? Poltergeist. Because I was just about Carol Ann's age when I watched it for the first time. But it still scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Good answer. Well, I, I appreciate it. I hope your, uh, Thanks so much. your food is well there. And uh, have, a gr- <laughs> have a great day in California. And I, I would show you my snow outside the window, but you don't want to see it. <laughs> Thanks so much. Take care. You too. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.